Before we talk about monoclonal antibodies, we need a quick recap of the different white blood cells in our immune system. At GCSE, we learn that white blood cells called phagocytes engulf and destroy infected cells and pathogens. And we also learn about another kind of white blood cell called a lymphocyte. Lymphocytes make antibodies, which have a few functions that basically end up with infected cells and pathogens being destroyed. There are different kinds of lymphocytes, but the ones that do make the antibodies are called B lymphocytes. But I think at GCSE, you can just put lymphocytes. Antibodies work because they can bind to antigens. And antigens are protein markers found on pathogens and infected cells. There are lots of different types of B lymphocytes. So that means there's going to be lots of different types of antibodies that can be made. Each type of antibody will have a complementary fit with a specific antigen. And scientists use this knowledge to make lots of antibodies in the lab. And then these antibodies have a variety of uses in medicine. When you see the word monoclonal antibodies, then the mono bit just means there's one type and clonal means there are lots of identical copies. Let's have a look at how they make monoclonal antibodies. Unfortunately, mice are usually used for this process, so there are ethical issues. First of all, I'll go over the generalized process and then we'll go through a specific example. The mouse will be injected with an antigen and the mouse will have an immune response to that antigen and therefore it's going to produce lots of white blood cells. The lymphocytes are the white blood cells that are needed. They have to be extracted from the mouse. The correct lymphocyte that is making the right antibodies has to be selected, but we need many more of these lymphocytes. So a lymphocyte making the right antibodies is fused with a tumor cell because tumor cells can divide continuously. And this fusion between a lymphocyte and a tumor cell results in a special cell called a hybridoma. Hybridomas therefore have the properties of the lymphocyte in that they can make lots of antibodies and the tumor cell. So we can make lots of these hybridomas make lots of lots of antibodies. So how are we going to get monoclonal antibodies that are used in pregnancy testing? The mouse will be injected with the human pregnancy hormone, HCG, and this is antigenic to the mouse. It shouldn't be in the mouse. So the mouse is going to have an immune response to this human pregnancy hormone. Therefore, it's going to produce lots of white blood cells and the lymphocytes will be extracted from the mouse. And then the lymphocytes that are making the correct antibodies against the human pregnancy hormone will be fused with tumor cells, therefore making hybridomas. Now we have lots of hybridomas that are gonna make lots of antibodies against the human pregnancy hormone. So how do pregnancy test strips actually work? Here are two pregnancy test strips. Each pregnancy test will have a test window and a control window. And we'll first look at what happens if a pregnant woman urinates on a pregnancy test. The absorbent end that has been urinated on becomes wet and now contains pregnancy hormone, HCG. So this is now inside the test strip. I'm obviously drawing it outside just to show you what's happening. The urine with the pregnancy hormone moves along the strip inside the pregnancy test and it connects with some antibodies that have been made especially to bind to the pregnancy hormone. And these antibodies have also been attached to a blue colored dye. The antibodies and the pregnancy hormone have a complementary fit and they move along the strip together to the test window area. In the test window area, you can see that there are some antibodies that have been stuck in a line. Because they're stuck, we say they're immobilized. They're fixed in place. As the antibody bound to the hormone moves nearer to the test window area, the hormone also attaches to these immobilized antibodies, which also have a complementary shape for the pregnancy hormone, but they're stuck in a line. So what you can see here is a kind of sandwiching of the hormone between these two antibodies. And this holds the antibodies with the dye attached in a line now, and that's where we see the blue line appear in the test window, indicating that this person is pregnant. But we do need to check that the test has worked properly, 
And if it is working properly, then as the rest of the antibodies continue to move along the strip, a different area of the antibody with a blue dye attached to it binds with a second set of antibodies that have been fixed in a line and a blue line appears in the control window. And therefore, because you've got a line in the test window and the control window to say the test has worked, this person is definitely pregnant. When a non-pregnant person urinates on the absorbent end, there's no pregnancy hormone in the urine for the antibodies with the dye attached to them to bind to. So there's nothing to sandwich these antibodies with those that are fixed in a line in a test window so you're not going to get any blue line appear but they'll continue to move along the strip and they will still be bound to the antibodies fixed in place in the control window and you will see a blue line appearing so that shows that the test has worked but that person is not pregnant or has not got enough pregnancy hormone in there to be detected. Monoclonal antibodies can also be made and used to test for other things such as testing a competitor's blood for performance enhancing drugs or antibodies can be tagged with a fluorescent dye and these particular antibodies will have been especially made to bind to tumour antigens and doctors can use a special camera to locate where the tumour is in the patient and they can be used to test for the presence of particular pathogens. We're all very aware of the lateral flow tests used to test for COVID, these use monoclonal antibodies and other pathogens such as the HIV virus and the bacteria that cause chlamydia, for example. Monoclonal antibodies can also be used to treat certain conditions such as some cancers. The monoclonal antibodies can be tagged with a radioactive material or an anti-cancer drug. When the antibodies are injected into the person, then the antibodies can bind to the cancer cells and deliver the drug or radiotherapy treatment directly to those cells, destroying the cancer cells. They can also be used to stimulate phagocytes to engulf infected or cancerous cells. And another example is to block viruses from being able to attach onto host cells and therefore they're not able to infect cells. That will mean that the virus is neutralized because the antibodies bind to the virus and block it. This is helpful for patients with a weakened immune system when the virus or when the virus is very dangerous like Ebola and certain variants of COVID for example. Unfortunately, there can be side effects such as allergic reactions or damage to neighbouring cells around the target cells. And research around using antibodies for treating disease is constantly developing. So let's have a look at some exam questions. Let's start with some fact we call. You can see some question marks in various places. So what do we think is being injected into the mouse? That is going to be the antigen. Which cells are going to be extracted from the mouse? those are going to be lymphocytes. Which cells are those lymphocytes going to be fused with? Tumor cells. And what cells do they make? Hybridomas. Complete the sentence by putting a cross in the box next to your answer. The cells produced when B lymphocytes and tumor cells combine are A, antibodies, B, hybridomas, C, mammary lymphocytes, or D, platelets. Well, it's definitely hybridomas, B. The molecules on pathogens which cause an immune response are called A, antigens, B, bacteria, C, hybridomas, or D, lymphocytes. Well, that is definitely A, antigens. Monoclonal antibodies can be produced in large quantities. Describe the steps in producing monoclonal antibodies. Well, first we need to inject the required antigen into a mouse, extract the lymphocytes made by the mouse and fuse them with tumor cells to make hybridomas. Each hybridoma can make an endless supply of monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are usually made using mouse lymphocytes. Candida albicans infection produces serious symptoms in patients with a poor immune system. Recently, scientists have produced monoclonal antibodies to candida albicans using human lymphocytes 
produced naturally after an infection. Candida albicans lives in the throat of infected patients. A sample is taken from the throat of a patient with a suspected Candida albicans infection. The sample is transferred onto a microscope slide. Describe how the monoclonal antibodies and a fluorescent dye could be used to see any Candida albicans pathogens on the slide. Bind the fluorescent dye to the monoclonal antibodies and add them to the slide. And then the monoclonal antibodies will bind to the Candida albicans, making them easier to see. In a laboratory, the human lymphocyte monoclonal antibodies were injected into animals infected with Candida albicans. The monoclonal antibodies caused increased phagocytosis of the Candida albicans pathogens. Doctors intend to start a trial to give the monoclonal antibodies to patients severely ill with Candida albicans. Explain how increased phagocytosis of the Candida albicans pathogen will help the patient. More Candida albicans will be engulfed and killed by the phagocytes, therefore causing less damage to the cells. Scientists have also used human lymphocytes to make monoclonal antibodies to other pathogens and to some types of cancer cell. Suggest one reason why these new monoclonal antibodies have been more successful in treating diseases in humans than monoclonal antibodies made using mice. The human immune system is more likely to reject or destroy mouse monoclonal antibodies and less likely to reject monoclonal antibodies that are human. A monoclonal antibody has been produced to treat pancreatic cancer. Explain how the monoclonal antibody works to treat pancreatic cancer. While the monoclonal antibody is attached to a radioactive substance or anti-cancer drug, and this monoclonal antibody can attach to the cancer cells, and the radioactive substance or drug will actually kill the cancer cells and stop them from dividing. A farmer thinks a potato crop is infected with potato virus Y, PVY. The farmer obtains a monoclonal antibody test kit for PVY. To make monoclonal antibodies, a scientist first isolates the PVY protein from the virus. Describe how the scientist would use the protein to produce the PVY monoclonal antibody. So all we need to do here is just apply what we already know about making monoclonal antibodies and just pop PVY as the antigen. Inject the PVY protein into the mouse. The mouse will have an immune response. Extract the lymphocytes and fuse them with tumor cells to make hybridomas. Select the hybridomas that make the antibody specific to PVY and then allow those hybridomas to clone, make many copies of themselves. Well, we've covered quite a lot in this video. Well done for making it through to the end. Good luck in your exams and I'll see you in the next video.